We've already eaten a lot of brand new Disney food so far this year, and you are in the right place if you want to figure out the best of the best so far in 2024. Got your notepad ready? Here we go. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Now we may still be in the first half of 2024, but we've already gotten the chance to try so many epic eats throughout the Disney World scene. These savory, sweet, and downright unique options have stood out to us so much, in fact, that we figure you'd want to add them to your tasting itinerary for your upcoming trip as well. That way, we can all bond over these tasty vacay foods together. Now, before we get started, I do have a little bit of a disclaimer for you. Some of those DFB tried and true favorite snack options are not going to be featured on today's list, not because they're not still fantastic, but because we're going to give some other options some space today. And we're going to let some new stuff get a chance to shine. But if you want a full list of our top 10 snacks in each park this year, complete with snack maps to help you track down these priority sweets and eats. That's right, snack maps. Love a snack map. Go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash best snacks and you can pick up our free best Disney World snack guide of 2024. Okay, we're going to start over in Disney Springs at Summer House on the Lake. There is a new cookie sheriff in town and you need to know about it. The Summer House has a cookie bar, which specializes in freshly baked cookies and goodies when you're looking for a quick and sweet snack during your shopping adventures. Now, this dessert-focused market has tons of giant cookies for you to choose from in its expansive display case, but if you're looking for something kind of unique and maybe not quite as heavy as one of their full-sized cookies, try ordering the cookie bits instead. These are about six bucks. You can order a cup of assorted cookie bites, which has about, eh, I'd say, four different flavors in it. It can be kind of hard to tell when they're all tossed together in a cup like that. Now this is a really fun option if you can't decide what cookie you want to try or if you've got younger kids in your group who you know won't eat a whole big cookie themselves but will be more apt to finish a bunch of little cookie pieces instead. The only problem with this option is that you can't choose which cookie bits are put in your cup. It's just whatever cookie crumbles the bakery has available at that time. So if there's a specific cookie flavor that you want to try like the crispy rice chocolate chip cookie or the lemon cookie or maybe even a seasonal variety then you're going to be better off just ordering the full cookies instead of the bits. But if you want to try a bunch at once, the bits are the way to go. So there are lots and lots and lots of barbecue options across Disney World. You know this, you love it. But the best splittable barbecue option we think is going to be in Disney Springs over at the Polite Pig. Think of it this way. If you and a friend go to Roundup Rodeo Barbecue at Hollywood Studios to share a meal, you're going to be paying $45 per person. However, if you go to the Polite Pig and you order a butcher board for two, which comes with their award-winning pork shoulder, smoked chicken, brisket, and barbecue cheddar sausage with slaw. I love that barbecue cheddar sausage, by the way. It's so good. Plus house pickles, two cornbreads, and a choice of two market sides, you're going to pay $44 bucks flat instead of per person. You can also upgrade your meal by adding ribs for an extra $7 or smoked turkey for an extra five. Though you don't have to order either if you don't want the extra meats. Now, not only is this a cheaper option with, dare I say, better quality barbecue to enjoy. Remember, Polite Pig is run by James and Julie Petrakis, who are basically Orlando food royalty. Like James Beard nominated, just like everybody knows about them. But this is also a faster option too, especially if you use the Polite Pig's mobile order. Mobile ordering from Polite Pig works a little differently than most restaurants in the Disney scene. Instead of ordering your food through the My Disney Experience app, you're gonna order through the Polite Pig's website instead. From here, you can choose to pick up your food ASAP and the restaurant will give you an estimate for how long you'll have to wait to pick it up, or you can schedule your order to be picked up at a later date and time. You can even schedule your mobile order for up to two weeks in advance. It's important to note that you can only order non-alcoholic beverages through Polite Pig's mobile ordering system. So if alcohol is something you're looking for, like something from their amazing bourbon bar, you'll have to head over to the restaurant and dine in instead. All right, now, of course, we are going to talk about the prime rib sliders in this video. If these ever get stripped from my life again, please check in on me because I will not be okay. The prime rib sliders have returned to the Cruise Cup and Disney's Yacht Club Resort. And I know, I know, I know I talk about these little beauties a lot. Well, to be fair, I haven't for the past few years because they haven't been there, but they are back. They got taken away when Cruise Cup closed after COVID. They are back, y'all. Anyway, for those of you who are new to the channel in the last four years, welcome to the Prime Rib Sliders. That's basically the, like, the subtitle of this channel. Anyway, I don't know how to emphasize to you how good these are. I'm not 
even that huge a roast beef sandwich fan, despite being from Buffalo where beef on whack is a big deal. These are just incredible. Anyway, the sliders come with two sandwiches stuffed with sliced prime rib meat, which of course is from the Yasmin Steakhouse next door. But then you go and accompany these things with a side of house-made chips and cups of horseradish cream and au jus, and you've just hit this plate out of the park. Now, these are kind of pricey sliders. They're 20 bucks, so don't come here thinking you're getting a quick and cheap sandwich sack. If you're a prime rib connoisseur and you want something that'll make you go, wow, Disney, I'm sorry I ever doubted you when it comes to food, then this is it. This is the one you're looking for. Now I have food FOMO, just thinking about the other people at Disney right now eating these sliders, and I am not there eating these sliders. So I guess I have to book a trip. Now we're gonna go from incredibly savory to incredibly sweet. This is the best new cupcake, the Everest cupcake at Restaurantosaurus. Disney is usually a hit or a miss when it comes to cupcakes, but the new one in Animal Kingdom isn't just a hit, it's a home run. The Everest cupcake arrived at Animal Kingdom recently and it's made with matcha cake, milk chocolate mousse filling, chocolate buttercream, crispy pearls, and a white chocolate Yeti image. This cupcake's a cutie and I know it's supposed to scream mountain vibes, but the little matcha crumbles give off succulent garbage garden to me with the addition of a scary looking Yeti in the garden. Now, if you're a matcha fan, then you're going to be happy to hear that this cupcake has a wonderful matcha flavor that comes through well without being overpowering. In fact, it helps prevent this cupcake from getting too terribly sweet, balancing out the rich chocolate mousse and the buttercream. And then there are those little crispy pearls on top, which give the cupcake a nice little crunch against all those soft textures. Now, if you do like your cupcake to be over the top sweet or you're not a huge matcha fan, then I'd skip out on this one. But if you're looking for a unique cupcake option with a nice balance of textures and flavors, then you you can grab the Everest cupcake over at Pizzafari or Restaurantosaurus for around seven bucks. Now, note that the frosting on this is really, really fudgy, dense frosting. So if you're not a frosting fan, you may want to cut this a little bit. But we really liked kind of making sure we got a bite of the frosting with a bite of the matcha cake for each bite we took. And it was really good. Okay, when you are in Magic Kingdom, get this. Now this coffee treat isn't new to anti-gravity's galactic goodies by any means, but when you order it with the right ice cream, it is very new. We ordered this cold brew float with the caramel ice cream this time. It's actually salted caramel ice cream and our whole Tomorrowland world turned upside down. This is simple execution. It's just your average Joffrey's cold brew blended with your choice of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, or salted caramel. But what makes this float fabulous in our personal experience is this caramel edition. It sweetens the cold brew just enough to not be too sugary, but not too bitter either. And when I say not too sugary, I don't mean you're going to need to add sugar and cream on top of the ice cream. Like that'd be overkill. What I'm saying is that these components blend together so well that even when the ice cream starts melting, when you're walking around in the heat, it just melds together even better after that. If you're a black coffee drinker, this is going to be a major put off for you. But if you tend to be someone who prefers those lighter brown coffees where you know the creamer is going to be the MVP of the cup, then this cold Cold brew float needs to be added to your must try list. Now, please, please, please be just as excited about this snack as I am, please. The Millionaire Shortbread over at the Basket at Wine Bar George in Disney Springs is that layered combination of dense, buttery shortbread, ooey gooey caramel, and rich dark chocolate. It is $8, very shareable, and a piece of heaven. Now, it's a little messy and melty after a while of being in the sun, but you know what will solve that problem? Eating it even faster. Now, I understand all of my British and Irish and Australian viewers that this is a typical thing for you, and you can find this in Marks and Spencer on any street corner, but it is not a typical thing for us here in the States. Millionaire shortbread is around, but it's not something that's, you know, in, in every convenience store. So this is a really big deal. I love millionaire shortbread. I think it's one of the best treats in the, just the simplest treats. Very, very rich, but I'm very jealous that you all get to have this whenever you want. You can just like go to the gas station and get a huge package of it, but we can't here in the US, so it's pretty, pretty exciting for us. So I hope you like it too. All right, ready for the best new fries? We're always a fan of loaded fries here at DFB. We love the burnt ends loaded fries over at Regal Eagle. We have a whole blog post about the best fries in Disney World. Anyway, usually you're gonna find me bragging about the beignets at Scat Cats Club in Port Orleans French Quarter, but we got something else to talk about now. This is something savory and filling and super potato-y versus beignet -y. Yep. 
we got gumbo poutine. The gumbo poutine at Scat Cats is made with thick cut fries topped with gumbo, cheese curds, and cheese sauce. And it's simple but effective. Now, I understand that gumbo is not gravy. I get it. I understand for you poutine purists. But look at this as its own thing. You don't have to call it poutine if you don't want to. It's kind of like disco fries with cheese on top. And the disco part tends to have a lot of other good stuff in it. Anyway, very simple, very effective. These fries do not skimp out on the toppings. They're creamy and cheesy and have a nice bit of a kick to them thanks to the Cajun spices. Now I will say they're not super crispy fries. So if you're a crispy fry person, you're gonna be disappointed. But we weren't disappointed by these and we'd do them again in a heartbeat. Now for a poutine runner up, we've also gotta give a quick shout out to the tandoori chicken poutine at Eat in Disney Springs. This is made with chaat masala fries, tandoori chicken, white cheddar curds, and rich tomato butter sauce. Yep, basically like butter chicken on top of the poutine. Now these fries are fresh and well seasoned and just like the gumbo poutine, they're also wonderfully savory and very, very cheesy. Honestly, this is probably one of the best things on the eat menu. So if you're a fan of adventurous options, but you don't have a whole lot of time to take out of your park day to sit down and enjoy a big meal, this poutine could be a good alternative. All right, ready for the best water park snack? That's right, we are actually pretty impressed sometimes with the water park food at Disney World. And on March 17th, Typhoon Lagoon reopened after months of being closed for refurbishments. With that reopening came a couple of new snacks, like the pork elote nachos, now with the Leaning Palms Quick Service. These are made with pork, of course, nacho chips, jalapeno cheese sauce, elote corn dip, jalapenos, and guacamole with chopped cilantro. These nachos are epic. As soon as we got them, we knew they would be incredible. They are piled high with toppings, great to share or make a meal out of if you're not feeling all that generous. It's okay, I have those days too. And granted, these aren't the chips you're gonna wanna go after if you're not a spice fan, but that little extra heat and elote spices are what make these chips really stand out from your typical theme park nachos. Along with the elote nachos, we also decided to try the Dole Whip bathtub sundae at Typhoon Tilly's made with three types of Dole Whip and soft serve, pineapple, straw, strawberry, and matcha. Disney's real big on matcha lately, apparently. But that's not the coolest part about this treat. It comes served in a bathtub-shaped bowl. Probably all the bathtubs that they ordered for like that Uncle Orville Sunday over in Magic Kingdom, and then they turned it into a Nightmare Before Christmas Sunday. We've had a, then I think there was a 4th of July bathtub Sunday. We had a lot of Sundays in those bathtubs, and I think they got a bunch left over. That's okay though. It's cool and it's cute, and it could be a cute little planter for you when you're done eating your Sunday out of it. Now, the Dole Whip flavors in the tub are pretty standard aside from the matcha, but even the matcha is subtle and it doesn't overwhelm the pineapple or strawberry. So, if you're looking for something completely unique, the bathtub sundae will be that for you in style alone, but maybe not so much in substance. Still, it's refreshing and tasty and maybe worth splitting among your group. Now, we've got a best prefix entree for you, and I'm gonna go with that royal prime rib roast at Artist Point. Now, there was a little bit of a controversy here at DFB on this one because we had a lot of folks who wanted to weigh in to say that the stroll through nature at Artist Point is the best prefix entree. So you've got the vegetarian entree, you've got the very much not vegetarian entree. Both are absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna combine them both into this point. Anyway, we're gonna start with the prime rib. And that's because, well, reason number one, it's really, really tasty. The meat is juicy and tender, packed with flavor. It might be a little bit too salty for some. I'm a big salt fan, so I love it. But I could see some people coming away from it and saying, oh, that's too much salt. Okay, anyway, it also comes with horseradish mashed potato, which is a little bit strong. I'm not sure if horseradish is that beloved a flavor. Of course, it's customary with a prime rib, but if you're not a big horseradish fan, do ask them to bring you the regular kind of kids mashed potatoes instead of the horseradish mashed potatoes. They will happily do that for you if you're not sure how you're gonna take the horseradish. But the other incredible thing on this plate is the Yorkshire pudding. This dish comes with a giant Yorkshire pudding. It's like as big as my head. It is light and airy and just an incredible thing to dip into that au jus. I love it and that's really one of the biggest draws for me with this dish. But everything else is amazing as well. Even the carrots they serve with this is so good. But reason number two why I'm an Artist Point Prime Rib fan is it's gonna get you the most bang for your prefix buck since it's probably the highest quality entree featured on the menu and the most expensive. Now, that being said, if you are a vegetarian eater or you're just a fan of 
really flavorful and veggie forward pasta dishes, we can highly recommend the stroll through nature dish. It's made with gnocchi, asparagus, leeks, arugula, sage, and Parmesan. The gnocchi dish is an incredibly rich, creamy sauce made complete with veggies featured and plenty of Parmesan cheese. Now let's talk just for a quick second about Artist Point. You know if you watch these videos that Artist Point was ranked as my top Disney World hotel restaurant for 2024, which is I'm sure got many people very upset because it's not a signature restaurant necessarily. It's a character restaurant. Usually the food isn't that great at those, but if you get the chance, give yourself the opportunity to dine here. This restaurant gets what it means to not only be a Disney-fied dining establishment, but a sophisticated one too. It's like a cross between a signature meal and a character meal. Plus you get to meet Snow White and Grumpy and Dopey and the Evil Queen, which no other Disney restaurant has. All of the apps and entrees and desserts on the prefix menu are themed to tell a fairy tale while you dine. So a lot of thought has been put into each of these. It's like a choose your own adventure story where you get to determine your happily ever after. I also love that they kept the mushroom soup here. The mushroom soup has always been a famous, famous, famous dish at Artist Point for so many years. And I love that they incorporated it into this menu you so you can still get it. Now, how about the best returning dessert? We're going to talk about the mini mango pie at Yak and Yeti Local Foods. This is just going to be a whole video of me talking about food I took for granted until it was taken away from me, only for it to get placed back on the menu again as if it never left. They can't get that past me. I know it was gone. Now, first, it was my prime rib sliders. Now we're over to my mini mango pie at Yak and Yeti Local Foods over at Animal Kingdom. The precious mini mango pies were quietly taken off the menu last year, making us mourn for that graham cracker crumble crust and mango flavored pie filling. It's a good snack combo. You've got sweet and tart, incredible. Anyway, not too big, not too sweet, not too tart, not too expensive, yet it was just the right amount of little afternoon treat. And then the miracle happened and the mini mango pies returned to local foods yet again. But to be fair, you don't necessarily have to be in Disney World to pick up one of these tasty mini pies. Few grocery stores like Kroger and Publix also sell them at times and in the key lime variety too. So if you're wanting a little taste of Animal Kingdom when you're back home, hit the grocery store bakery section. It'll sometimes be in that like cold bakery section. You'll see they will be labeled with the brand name Kenny's Pies. Next up is at Deluxe Burger at Disney Springs, the Bon Mi Burger. So Deluxe does a great job at switching out their seasonal burger variety to give you something new and fresh each time you visit. So when we saw the Bon Mi Burger hit the menu at the beginning of March, we knew we had to get it again. And we came out of that restaurant with zero regrets, not a single one, which is not always the case with burgers in Disney. Deluxe, however, tends to be the exception to this. The Bon Mi Burger is made with the Deluxe Special Blend Patty, Hoisan Pork Belly, Jalapeno Jam, Napa Cabbage Slaw, and Cilantro with a house-made bun. While the burgers at Deluxe are consistently good, this burger in particular feels elevated. The high quality pork belly is thick and the slaw adds freshness and acidity to cut the fat of that pork burger and pork belly. And the jalapeno jam ties everything together. It's not a heavy flavor, but it does help meld the sweet and spicy. Unless you're completely spice averse, this burger's heat factor shouldn't intimidate you too much. And if you're completely cilantro averse because you have that gene that makes cilantro taste gross like I have, you can always request the burger to be made without it. Easy peasy. Now we're not sure how long the Bon Mi burger will stick around. There's a good chance it might be swapped for another limited time burger by the time your trip rolls around, so keep your eye on the menu and see what seasonal burgers will be available during your upcoming visit. Another spot in Disney Springs that seems to be consistently switching up its menu with each passing month to keep us all on our toes is Swirls on the Water. This is a kiosk that serves up specialty Dole Whips that you're not gonna find anywhere else most of the time. When I asked our DFE reporters what their favorite thing has been that they've eaten in Disney World in 2024 so far, the answer I got from over half of the team was the same. The Bananas Foster Sundae from this very kiosk. This sundae is made of banana soft serve and toasted marshmallow soft serve swirled in a waffle bowl with caramel sauce, banana whipped cream, and topped off with caramel coated crisp pearls. That banana flavored soft serve is so creamy and the banana pieces are completely covered in that caramel drizzle. Ain't no ingredients getting left behind here. But what we really appreciated with this one is that it was presented to us in a regular bowl that surrounded the waffle bowl to keep it from getting too messy. Good call, cast members. While it's fun to see what Swirls on the Water is going to come up with for each new season, we definitely wouldn't be mad if they decided to keep the Bananas Foster Sunday around just a little bit longer. 
So Skipper Canteen continues to be an underrated table service in the Magic Kingdom realm, and that's because it can be a little too adventurous for some. But if you're looking for an appetizer here that can be enjoyed by just about anybody, you're going to want to go rogue and order something off the menu. Skipper Canteen has a secret menu featuring eats and drinks that you're not going to find on the regular food lineup on the page in front of you. Instead, you're going to have to ask your server about the secret stuff specially, or they might end up spilling the secrets without any prompting. It all depends on which server you get. But the secret menu does change around. So you never know what it's going to be, but the Pau de Cajo is one of those hush-hush items that does tend to stick around visit after visit. The Pau de Cajo is a cheese bread. It comes with a chimichurri sauce on the side, and on its own, the bread is nice and light and cheesy and tasty, but if you're a dip person like we are, that flavorful chimichurri makes it even better. A bit of warning though, the sauce does have a bit of a kick to it. Not too much, but enough that you may want to warn your kids about it before they start dipping away. Now, this is just as shocking for me to say as it might be for you to hear. One of our best underrated meals that we've had this year is from Tortuga Tavern. Now, this Magic Kingdom quick service tends to consistently make it at the bottom of our list when it comes to Disney places we'd willingly choose to eat, but mostly that's because it's not very often open or it's open weird hours. It's just not consistent or reliable. But just recently, we feel like maybe we're starting to see this Adventureland-based spot a little differently than we used to. All right, let's put our hands together for the star of Tortuga Tavern, the orange chicken strips, right? This basket comes with four chicken strips tossed in a sweet orange soy glaze, sprinkled with green onions and served with a side of house-made chips. You can taste that orange flavor pretty strongly with these dudes, and while they're not exactly like the orange chicken you'll get at an Asian restaurant, it's the same vibe. The green onions scattered on top also add another layer of tang to an otherwise very sweet and sticky meal. Now, looking for a lunch that takes things one step sweeter? Then you may want to order the peanut butter, chocolate hazelnut, and banana sandwich here instead. The fillings inside this one work incredibly well together, giving you all kinds of sweetness from the chocolate and that hazelnut and the banana, while the peanut butter brings in the nuttiness and a little bit of saltiness to help balance things out. The bread that it comes on is also nice and toasted to give the sandwich some extra crunch. Could I easily make this sandwich at home? Yes. But are the kids and adults alike going to enjoy all the sweet flavors in this sandwich if they're looking for a Disney meal with a little extra richness and creaminess to it? Yeah. Now, in a surprising turn of events, Tortuga may not be the restaurant you want to completely pass up during your Magic Kingdom day after all. But Tortuga, we're still not besties or anything just yet. It's only open between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. sometimes. Outside of those time frames, cast members will put a sign up that says the restaurant is unavailable. So if you want to try those orange chicken strips or the banana sandwich, you'll either need to eat here for lunch or a really early dinner. Just don't rely on it being open and available all day long or every day. Now let's talk about something that's strictly plant-based, the Coconut Tres Leches de la Isla Fresca. I love the Epcot festivals, and my favorite part, of course, is going to be all of those food booths. Now, Flower and Garden is happening right now, and they have a little something for everyone, including a ton of plant-based options at the festival this year. Now, because Flower and Garden is all about the plants, they have that little Garden Graze food stroll, which you can find listed in the free Flower and Garden Festival passport. You can pick that up lots of places in the park. To complete this Garden Graze food stroll, you'll need to make a stop at each of the designated spots and pick up at least five of the eight snacks featured for the stroll. When you purchase each snack, you'll get a stamp in your passport, and after you've collected five, you can head to the Pineapple Promenade food booth to collect your prize. Spoiler alert, your prize will be another exclusive treat, but this one's on the house. So which of the items featured in this Garden Graze is our all-time favorite? Probably the Coconut Tres Leches from La Isla Fresca. This $5 plant-based dessert is soaked in almond, coconut, and oat milk to make it super moist and creamy, and the dairy-free whipped topping is all also super creamy and fluffy and a satisfyingly smooth texture. Nothing offensive about that. Now, while this ranks for our reporters as one of their favorites, it doesn't necessarily rank for Bria and me specifically. I'm not a huge fan of wet cake. She doesn't love coconut. So if you go to the festival with Bria and me, you can probably eat our portion of this, but we definitely wanted to include it because our reporters loved it. And by the way, there are so many solid items available at all the Epcot festivals, but there are so many changes happening in the park lately. It's more important than ever to make sure you know what you want to try at a fest before you arrive at the park. So to help you out, we've got those full festival guides on dfbstore.com. Those are going to tell you in detail about each of the different food and entertainment offerings, and they'll give you reviews. They'll give you all the information. There's photos of everything. So definitely pick one of those up before you head to a festival, or if you want to get more 
bang for your buck, get the Everything Bundle, which not only gives you each of the different Epcot Festival guides currently available, but also all of our other DFB guidebooks. So you get everything, y'all. Now, if you do get one of those guidebooks, just make sure to type in code YouTube so you can save even more money on your purchase. And it's a 100% money back guaranteed purchase. If you don't like it, no problem. You just let us know, we'll send your money back, you get to keep the guide. Next on our list is the best classic that we don't want you to forget about, the bacon and eggs appetizer at Steakhouse 71. Now, I know we haven't talked about this in a while. It has been on the menu for a very long time. It's been on the menu since it was the wave of American flavors way back when. Now, this isn't just your standard bacon and eggs. Whether you eat at Steakhouse 71 or the attached Steakhouse 71 lounge, you'll have the option to order the bacon and eggs appetizer. So this is a staple of this restaurant. I remember when they revamped the menu and this came onto it and I had to ask a ton of questions of the server because I'd never had what's called a perfect egg. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. The bacon and eggs at Steakhouse 71 is a maple lacquered pork belly, smoked cheese grits, and what they call a perfect egg, meaning the egg has been cooked in a water bath to 143 degrees and then brought back to 135 degrees, which turns the yolk into a sort of custard. I love me some bacon, but I'd pick that pork belly bacon featured in this appetizer over the regular stuff any day of the week. And while I'm not a super big egg fan, I had never had a perfect egg before. I tried, well, I tried this years and years ago, but it is still so good. And I never had a perfect egg, so I didn't really understand that custardy yolk situation. Oh my goodness. This dish is kind of a work of art. So it's labeled as an appetizer, but if you wanna order it as your main meal, it's 15 bucks and a bit on the lighter side of things portion-wise, so you can do that. But if you're wanting something more substantial to tide you over for longer, you might be better off ordering one of the heavier items on the Steakhouse 71 menu, like that stack burger or the Steakhouse cuts featured during dinner. Don't forget the dips and the sauces. All right, we might still be early in 2024, but I think it's safe to say that Disney World has come in swinging with the new and returning eats this year. We are so looking forward to what other exciting food options might be available for us as we get further and further on into 2024. Now don't forget, if you wanna know our top 10 snacks for each Disney World park, complete with full snack maps to help you track down each of these treats while you're there, then head on over to disneyfoodblog.com slash best snacks so you can pick up our free DFB snack guides today. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.